if we're going to talk about the distance between two skew lines, we have to know what skew lines are first. In R2, we, we can have two lines that are parallel, and they'll never touch. Two lines that cross, and so they'll touch at one point. Or two lines that are, to all intents and purposes, the same line. One is right on top of the other, so they touch everywhere. In R3, we have some similar um, alternatives. We have parallel lines, but they don't have to be on the same plane as they are in R2. Parallel lines in R3 might look something like, there's my coordinate grid in R3. So if I've got one line here, I've added its shadow. Uh, and then another line here, and let's draw its shadow in as well. Okay, and you can see that these two lines are parallel. I mean, I can't rotate this the way I would like to. If this were an animation, I'd be able to rotate it and show you that the lines were parallel. And no matter where you, uh, which angle you looked at this from, you, the lines would never cross. You could probably t tilt the coordinate system to just the right angle to make it look like the, the lines were coincident, that they were actually the same line. You couldn't tell one line from another. But even those lines are parallel, right? So we have parallel lines. We have coincident lines, uh, two, two types of parallel lines. Uh, we also have in R3 two lines that do cross. Let's do one in blue, maybe, and one in yellow. And if these two lines are at the same height right here, they actually cross. I don't know if you can see that, I'll point to it instead. Right there, they're crossing. They're actually touching at that point. If two lines are not parallel and not coincident, and they're not actually touching, the only other option is that they must be non-parallel, non-touching, and we call those skew lines. That's what this word here means, skew. Not parallel. These are not parallel, but they're also not touching. Okay, so this is an example of skew lines here. Now, if we want to find the distance between two skew lines, we are again talking about the distance, the, the shortest possible distance between those two lines. And so what we're going to be looking for here is a, a vector whose magnitude we can take, or if we're lucky, we might be able to do a projection and only take the, the component computation, the scalar projection computation, and find that magnitude that way. Hopefully you'll remember that when we talked about the equation of a line, we said that one way to write it was as r equals r naught plus t times v, where r, r naught, and v are all vectors. v is the vector parallel to the line in question. That's the one that's giving us the direction the line is going in. R naught is the is the vector that comes from the point x naught, y naught, z naught. So it's the vector that starts at the origin, 0, 0, 0, and points in the direction of x naught, y naught, z naught. And r is the vector, the, the general vector uh, that comes from the point from 0, 0, 0 to x, y, z. In this problem, in this situation, we actually have two lines here. So let's see, um, I could call them both R, but that's confusing. I think I'm gonna stick with the uh, notation that your textbook uses, and that is to call one of them R1 and one of them R2. So I'm gonna have an equation for line R1, an equation for R line R2. Let me label these vectors. I think that might be a little bit, that might be helpful. This is the direction vector. This is the position vector. That's the one that tells us the position we're at in, in, in space, essentially the, the point in space, x naught, y naught, z naught. And these are just the, uh, or this vector is just the one that describes the line. It's kind of like our equation. Um, it's kind of like our y in y equals mx plus b. And R naught already has a subscript on it. So instead of calling it 
are not one or something silly like that, I think I'm just going to go again with what your textbook is using, and that's to call it A instead, and I'll call this other one B. Those are still position vectors. And then in the first line, we have a scalar times a direction vector. And we have one in the second equation, the second line as well. So again, we're going to, I'll use subscripts there to distinguish. They could be different numbers. In fact, they probably will be different numbers. So I need to distinguish one uh, parameter value from, from the other. And then your textbook uses V and W here. And so I would use V1 and V2, but it's, it's using V and W. So I'll just go with that. So these are the equations of two lines in space. We don't know what the position vectors are, what the direction vectors are, or what the parameter values are. We have no idea from this. These are generic, specific, but generic. By specific, again, I mean this is a vector. It is a given specified vector. It's just that at this point in time, I don't know what it is. I, I do this so that you can see the general case, so that you can see where the formula comes from. And then if we have time, we'll go back and do an example where the, the actual vectors are known or we can find them. Now, as I've already pointed out, the shortest distance between these two lines is the line that comes closest to both of them. And by, by its nature, that line, line segment, is going to be perpendicular. I'm having a hard time drawing my perpendicular indicator here. It's going to be perpendicular to both of these lines. All right, that's hard to see. In This is supposed to represent R3, but I'm drawing it on an R2 surface, so it's actually really quite difficult to do. And the highest level of admir admiration for artists who can do this, get this perspective just right. But these two lines, this pink line R1 and the blue line R2, are skew. They're floating in space. They are separated from one another by, at the very shortest possible distance between them, they're separated here by the length of this white line segment. And our goal is going to be to figure out what is the length of that line segment. Well, the direction of R1 is a direction vector V, your book is calling it. And the direction of R, sorry, I've labeled both of these R1. This one needs to be R2. The direction vector for R1 is going in the same direction as R1, not surprisingly, because R1 is defined in part by its direction vector. And the direction vector for R2 is also, if I start from the origin, going in the same direction as R2. So we'll call that W, that's the direction vector for the line R2, whereas V is the direction vector for the line R1. Well, the direction vector for a line that is orthogonal to both of these lines is also going to be orthogonal to both of these lines or both to both of these vectors. So what I'm going to do now is find the cross product of V with W and that will give me a direction vector for this line. In order to use the magnitude of this vector to find the distance between these two lines we need to have a vector. And that vector is going to have a direction component based on the cross product of the, the lines themselves. Sorry, between the, the direction vectors of the lines themselves. But we're also going to need, so that'll be the direction vector, we're also going to need a position vector for this guy. Each of the lines R1 and R2 has a position vector on it. Let's say R1's position vector is here. and R2's is here. And there will also be a vector that goes between these two. We're going to call this vector U. Now at the moment this diagram is a little bit misleading because I've been talking about finding the distance of this, the length of this line segment here, the magnitude of this vector. Well this vector may not be this short. This is the shortest, uh, this line segment is the right length. It's the shortest distance between these, these other two lines. But the vector that we found here, or we're going to find here, this V cross W, we don't know how long that is. That could be really, really long, or it could be short. It could be, you know, anyway, my point is that we don't know the length of the vector. We really only 
are imagining that the, the piece of it that we want is this line segment right here. So the next thing I'm going to point out is that in order to find the, the correct length, the shortest length, the position, the position vector R1 and the position vector R2, each one of those is a position vector for our two lines. There's a distance between those two, right? There's a length of this vector. And if I want to find the shortest such distance, the shortest such position vector, then I need to project this vector u onto this vector v cross w. That projection will be a vector of the correct length. And as we noticed in the previous section where we were talking about the distance between a point and a plane, all we really need here is the scalar of that vector, and that can be computed using the scalar projection or the comp. So what I need here is the comp of the vector u onto the vector v cross w. So that's going to look something like this notationally, v cross w down here. Remember that v cross w is a vector, so I'm, I'm projecting a vector onto another, and this is going to be its length. That computation will be u dotted with the vector v cross w, and I'm going to take the magnitude of that, or the absolute value of that, and I'm going to divide that by the magnitude of the vector v cross w. U, though, this vector here, is this vector here in my diagram. And that's the vector that goes from one of my lines to the other. And because it does that, it goes from one of the, I've kind of drawn this backwards, but it goes from one of the lines, one, the position vector of one of the lines to the other. And so I can replace U with b minus a, and then I'll still need to multiply that, dot, dot that with v cross w. And divide. So since this is the distance I'm looking for, I'm just going to write the d down here, the distance between two points. This is our formula for the distance between two lines. The distance between two lines, not the distance between two points. Sorry about that. The distance between two lines is the shortest distance between two lines that are not parallel and not intersecting. Let's take a look at an example. Find the distance between these two skew lines. There's a couple of things to note here. The notation's a little bit different. First of all, they've labeled their lines R and, and P instead of R1 and R2. They've used two different letters for their parameters. Instead of T1 and T2, they've used T and S. So we've got T here, which is what we've been used to using. But what we, we have an S in this second, uh, the equation of the second line, but that's just uh, instead of uh, t, right? It's a, di a different number, a different parameter, um, but we, we don't know what it is. We have to give it a variable name, and we're just using a different letter here. The other thing to notice, and I think this is a bigger deal, is that these are in a different order than we've been seeing them. So I'm, I'm very, very tempted here to rewrite these. r of t equals negative 7, 4, 2 plus t times 2, negative 5, negative 4, because that's the order I'm used to seeing these lines in. And, and, and that way I'll know that when I pull the variable, the various information that I need from these two lines, um, I'll be getting it from the right place. So p of s is going to be negative 1, negative 6, negative 5, plus s times negative 4. 5, negative 2. 
the general form for the equation of a line is r of t. I haven't been using this sort of function notation. You do see it. It's not strictly speaking necessary, but it just tells me what the parameter is here. It's r of t equals r naught plus t times a position, sorry, times a direction vector v. This is our general form for the equation of a line. And we can see that form here, r equals, this is going to be my, my position vector, and this is my v, my direction vector. This is my position vector here, and this is my direction vector here. So let's give these a couple of names. Um, so they're in line with what we did on the previous screen. I want to call this one v, that position, sorry, that direction vector, and this one I'm going to call w. And for my position vectors, I'm going to call this one a and this one b. Because I have a formula now, right, that I can plug these things into, but I need to know what these things are. And my formula for the distance between these two lines is d equals the absolute value of vector b minus vector a, which will be a vector, because when you add or subtract two vectors, you get another vector, dotted with the cross product of v and w. That's also a vector. Cross product of a vector is a vector. The dot product of this vector and this vector will be a scalar. And the magnitude of the vector v crossed with w will also be a scalar. So there's my formula. Let's take our various parts now and plug those in. B minus A is going to be component-wise the, the components of vector B minus the components of vector A. So I'll get, for this vector, I'll get negative 1 minus negative 7, negative 6 minus 4, negative 5 minus 2. That's the vector B minus A. And I'm going to dot that with the cross product of v and w. Well, that's a little bit more involved, isn't it? So let's go over here. v crossed with w will be the determinant of this matrix. i, j, k. v is 2, negative 5, negative 4, and w is negative 4, 5, negative 2. That determinant is going to be something times i minus something times j plus something times k. Please remember to make this minus, right? We're going to, we may end up with some, a negative value here, but this has to be a minus where this one and this one are both positive. All right, so crossing out my i row and i column, I'm left with this group of four numbers, and I want the determinant of that. So I get 10, so this is going to be positive 10 minus negative 20, 10 plus 20, or 30. And then I'm going to cross out the j column, and I get 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4, Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. So I have negative 4 minus 16. That's negative 20. And then the last one, I'm going to cross out the k column. I get 2 times 5 is 10 minus positive 20. 10 minus 20, that's negative 10. So this vector is 30, 20, negative 10, because that was a negative a minus a negative, right? And that's going to go in here, 30, 20, negative 10. And then I will still need to divide by the magnitude of V cross W. Well, V cross W, V cross W is what I just found, right? V cross W is equal to this vector right here. So the magnitude of V cross W should be pretty easy to find. We'll have 30 squared plus 20 squared plus negative 10 squared, and that is the square root of 900 plus 400 plus 
100, which is the square root of 1400, which simplifies to 10 root 14. So that's my magnitude. That's the magnitude of the cross product there, 10 root 14. So all that's left now is this dot product. So let's see, 6 times 30 is 180. Negative 10 times 20 is negative 200. Negative 7 times negative 10 is positive 70. That will still be over 10 root 14. That is, let's see, 180 minus 200 plus 70 is 50. It's already positive, so I can drop the absolute value bars at this point. And when I reduce this, I get 5 over root 14, which works out to be about 1.336. And that is, and that is, the shortest distance between these two lines in R3.